Blog Talk Radio. Pretty much, you know, 
pulled out to the situation of why I didn't want to go. So I'm going to see if I can find it. It was basically the High Times article that popped up Friday, Saturday, something like that, about the five myths of marijuana. The five myths of marijuana. And i got to say, they were wrong on all five. I mean, terribly wrong, <laughs> surprisingly, amazingly wrong, scarily wrong. It was pretty kind of sad to read that article and think, this is a publication that is supposed to be on the, doing the, the supportive publications on the benefits of, and you know, on the positive sides of cannabis. Marijuana, pot, dope, Michoacan, Acapulco gold, oregano, you can call it whatever the hell you want. They're supposed to be supportive. And if they're supposed to be supportive, i got to ask why in the wide world of sports would they put out an article about the five myths of pot supporting the fact that they're myths, and we all know they're not. They know they're not. Number three was the blatant lie. And... And it started out, I, I'm not para, I'm paraphrasing here, I'm not reading the article as much as I'd like to be able to read the article. Let me see if I can pop it up. It, I know what page I should be able to dig it up on. I mean, because I was shocked, people. I mean, literally, I read this article, I'm like, really? This is what they're trying to get people to believe? Are you serious? They're actually trying to say this is just conspiracy theory or bunkum or just high ons imagining, you know? So let me see if I can dig through here. But <coughs> oh, pardon me. Yes, but it was on the five myths of pot. Surprised me to see it deleted by this point. Um, let me take a look. Yeah, let me take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Let's see what we got here. I know it's in here somewhere. I just have to scroll down and find it. But, yeah, I mean, number three was talking about, you know, basically in a paraphrase, you know, we know, uh, we've seen the videos of THC killing cancer cells in the Petri dish, too, but that's just the Petri dish, people. It don't happen in real life. THC cannot stop cancer. And this is basically the gist of number three on their myth of marijuana. I mean, are you kidding me? High Times is putting a story out that THC, the thing that has proven to true kill cancer, yeah, it doesn't do it. As if High Times is more medically uh, supportive than PubMed. Now, granted, I'm not a big, you know, ported, uh, you know, funded um, media site. PubMed, you can call it a media site, but it's a media site, you know, for doctors and medical industry and ran by doctors and researchers. And it's, you know, the hardcore studies, so there's bias in there, but you really got to know what you're reading and know what you're reading about to understand where the bias is at. But to find bias against cannabis from high times? That's like reading Mad Magazine and getting an actual, real, honest story with no embellishment, no Alfred Newman, no funkiness, no freckles. Yeah, yeah, that's, uh... So, yeah, I read that thing, and I'm sat there kind of bewildered, thinking, now, why are they saying this? You know, what in earth could be, you know, antagonizing high times to try to sell as myths five long-known facts that have been long-time proven, especially three, THC don't kill cancer. Um, oh, oh, I know the other one. No harm. Well, not the way they phrased it. You know, there's no, you know, said that it's bunkum that there's no harm in cannabis. Now, there is harm in cannabis. They are right about that. If you're at the end of a raid, especially a raid at the wrong house, probably a lot of harm going on. 
Um, you're getting shot by a drug dealer because he wants his money for the cocaine and the cannabis, and yeah, there's probably some harm there. But as far as cannabis harming, okay, yeah, people may take too big of a hit and pass out and puke. Oh, God, did that happen over the weekend? That's I heard it happen <laughs> more than once. Um, that being said, harm. Okay, if you pass out, smack your head, give yourself a concussion, sure, you're going to get harm. But smoking cannabis, shoving it up your patooey in a suppository, eating it, ingesting it, until you can't move off the couch, well, okay, there may be a little harm if the house starts on fire and you can't get up or don't even know it. But this is what we're talking about, you know. The High Times is selling lies as actual facts being called myths. So, yeah, between that and the crap I heard about, you know, some of the stuff going down there and the, you know, raceway dealer or owner being a putz and some of the other, you know, crap going on, you know, take mumbo-jumbo crap out of high times themselves, I decided it was time to just boycott it. I didn't go last year. I didn't go the year before. Dealing with a bunch of 15-year-olds getting stoned all day, you know. Hey, I did that when I was 13. Kind of outgrew it back then, you know. No big deal, but I thought it'd be nice to go hang out with some adults and the people, but it looks like most of them stayed home. No offense to anybody who went out there, but you're all trying to, you know, pass recreational (laughs) legalized pot in this state. And you go out and have this cannabis fucking, excuse my French cup, high times bullshit. And show the state exactly why, the biggest efforts why, you guys got lucky with TV5. They did a nice little reporting job, I'm surprised. But in the long run... I talked to probably 40 people that were out there over the weekend in just the last two days, Saturday evening, yesterday, and a little bit today, and yesterday, and you know, and I know I'll be seeing some people I've seen post all night last night, and this, that, and the other thing, and yeah, it was cool watching people, you know, do some dabs until they puked, and a few people passing out, and hey, the really expensive equipment was, you know, kind of cool, but you know, really expensive, and you know, not many people would be able to afford it unless you know, already got a dispensary open or, you know, are doing pretty well in a county that they're not busting down your doors and taking you in for the pookie for the night. So, you know, hey, I like these things. They're all cool, but I've never been one of the crowd. And, of course, a lot of you know that. You've never seen me at your crowd events. Now, like I said, you know, no offense, people, but I got over hanging out with the boys to get high because it was cool back when I was fucking 15 before I had a driver's license and I had a life and a job and, a, you know, adult things to worry about. Yeah, it, I mean, yes, it's mildly beneficial if you're deeply in the cannabis community. That place looks so damn dead there wasn't even a tenth of the cannabis community out. There wasn't even a percent, maybe two percent of the actual cannabis community. I've watched it on TV5. Man, I've seen I've seen county fairs pull more people in by the day for a you know event like this. There should have been standing room only out there. So hey, you know I, I'm glad you guys had fun. I'm you know glad High Times came in and made thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars off Michigan people. You know with their twenty five hundred dollars, three thousand dollar, two thousand dollar booth rentals for ten by ten spaces. You know, and all the craziness that was costing in there, and all the cops that were called. I bet you that had to, you know, have a pretty penny and taxed into it somewhere. So, yeah, man. You know, high times, they, you know, pretty much like the other corporation, normal, oh, sorry, organization, they haven't been doing nothing relevant for 40 years or 20 years now, since the late 80s at the minimum, middle 80s, so we can say 30 years, 85, 95, 2005, 2015, 
they really haven't been doing much but try to get you to give government control of all of it anyways. Well, they were co-opted in the early 80s by George Soros of Monsanto fame. Yeah, they can scream all you want, but everybody who was in California knows about Prop 19, knows Prop 19 failed because Normal was backing it. And George Soros was funding it through a set of lawyers. It's all out there in the California possible. Say whatever you want, my opinion, but the, uh, my opinion is founded on people who've seen the stuff, the documents that were out there, the hardcore facts. Prop 19 in California in 2010, 2012, whenever it was, failed because it was a coup attempt to be taken over by the big boys. And once that little bit of information got snuck out there, it died before it even got to the ballot. It was four months before it hit the ballot. It was a sure thing. Everybody was just passing. That information about who was funding it all came out three months earlier, and by two months it had lost down to, like, from 65% support in California down to the 30s. So it fall. It died which is why California did not legalize recreational pot back 10 or 5 years ago or whatever it was. I've been a background background watcher. I'm not one of those guys that want to go spin my wheels in the mud. I'd rather do other things that are far more important and just wait for the rest of the world to catch up to the time when it's time to move. And guess what? You have all finally caught up. Started to catch it up last year, watching it come around, watching everybody's eyes, you know, open up and viewpoints change and information, you know, get replaced with better information and more details and more realizations and more, you know, things that weren't known that were found being found out. And now everybody wants to talk about recreational cannabis, which is what it was, you know, waiting for. But, you know, like I said, in the 80s, even in the early 90s, hey, I thought recreational cannabis was just going to be the cat's ass. Hey, we just need to legalize it. Legalizing it will fix it. It will take the government out of the way. But I was a musician. I was in the bars playing every weekend pretty much every weekend, probably worked, you know, a good 38 to 40, 42 weekends a year, if not a little bit more, and man, I got looking at things, and got talking to bartenders, and bar owners, and other musicians, and sound men, you know, and cops at night when they come into the bar, because really, they're in there looking for the drunks, not the band. <laughs> a lot of band guys know quite a few of the late night cops because we're in this, you know, doing the same thing at the same places and the same times. But uh, with that being said, you know, it, there was a, a mind shift coming. Been watching it for decades. Started happening in the, you know, early 2000s and. Then it really started, you know, around 2007, 2006, it really started kicking on. By 2008, it was hot and heavy here in the state. And now we're looking at 30 states, 35 states in this union, this representative republic, not a democracy, representative republic, have some kind of cannabis laws on the book, whether it's a, you know, medical CBD only, which is, you know, kind of foolish. We all know that. Anybody that, you know, takes a look at it knows. Or, uh, you know, just, uh, you know, a recreational bill. Whatever the case is, there's always a couple different things on there. Um, so there's a few of them out there. And, uh, you know, there's over half the country has some kind of law in the books. But, you know, most of it started out as medical and last three or four years, the shift push has come really fast and thick, as I expected it would, into this whole idea of, you know, let's get it done, but thankfully, between, you know, 92, 94, 95, and 2005, 2007, 
you know, just before we had our act and our chance to take our first and only baby step that the state needed to take, not the next one, not the first of a series, the one and only, and we didn't even take a baby step. If you remember right, we stepped right out there and put up the best language the country had had to MPP for doing that marijuana policy project. They put a lot of effort into that. They did a great job. I was tickled with the bill. I thought it was great. No, it wasn't total repeal, but for a medical bill, it was damn workable. A little funky on the numbers. Okay, two and a half again. We've talked about that before, but yeah. Smartly done. It was doable. You know, the point of the two and a half, in my opinion, is you were never supposed to be arrested or hit for having more than two and a half. That was what the whole transfer to, you know, patient to patient transfers were about, which are part of the act. Don't let the Court of Appeals in the opine, not the law, but the opinion of William Schutte, Billy Bong Schutte, as he was known in the 70s, don't let his opine of patient to patient transfers are illegal get you. The Supreme Court had to. Screw the pooch on the definition of the public health code in a few in the definition of how to read a public or a people's initiative to rule the way they did in McQueen. The same Supreme Court, different justices, ruled in Missouri, and I don't care what one of you liars I mean lawyers out there will say it, Missouri overturned McQueen when the damn opinion says in contrast this court finds in the opposite of McQueen, that means they're overturning McQueen. I don't care how much you want to say. I don't care how many dollars you get for a retainer. You are blowing smoke out your batootie. The Mazur case said, in contrast, speaking directly to McQueen, it even said, broad and general, in people who have a doctor's recommendation, a.k.a. recommended patients, not registered patients, recommended patients were protected by the act. Contrary to the other Supreme Court cases that have came down before, and even since, because within 45 days the other one came out that everybody's been waiting for and they Pooch the screw on that one, too. No surprisingly on purpose. Whoops, I mean accidentally. They wouldn't do nothing on purpose. If they did it on purpose, well, hell, they'd be subverting the actual Michigan Constitution and committing treason. I wouldn't want to accuse our Supreme Court justices of committing treason without evidence. Although there are, are those Supreme Court opinions... And I'd be really interested to wonder what the U.S. Supreme Court said about the Michigan Supreme Court ability of reading this people's initiative compared to how they've read the other ones in the state. God, that would be an interesting court case to set in and be a fly on the wall in, wouldn't it? Government works best when you make it beat itself to death. They've been doing that to us turning us against each other for decades. The only way a good government works, this government can be workable and good, is we make it fight itself. And that's what's happening in the you know, Medical Marijuana Act, which is why your legislature's got to fix it with a 75% supermajority. And the actual legality in, in stuff for the actual warrantless compliance checks that are actually been going on in the state, although they won't do, no, no, we're not doing that. Ain't nobody getting a warrantless compliance check. But why are people up north and all around the country on the west side of the state, I've heard people down south, oh, we're here to inspect your grow. Uh, uh, wait a minute, you got a warrant? No, we don't need one. I mean, they just bully their way in and find out that there are Smart enough people are pushing it out and saying, no, you go get a warrant. But they're trying to make you accept power and authority to do a compliance check now. They haven't even passed the provisioning bill and the medical bill into uh, the Michigan Medical Marijuana Act with their 75% supermajority. 
And if you think they're going to run that through without trying to, you know, Rick Jones or one of these other line bags try to sneak in a warrantless compliance check, you ain't paying close enough attention. So, this is where we're at. You know, this is what's coming down the pike. You know, last week we had the introduction of seed to jail, I mean seed to sale tracking. Now, you understand seed to sale tracking doesn't mean just <laughs> for the shop that's buying the seed and then selling it to you. You better understand that seed to sale tracking means seed until that seed is used. If you buy that seed and then you turn around and nine months later got some really nice harvested buds and you sell that bud to the local dispensary without the proper tracking information and you just made a new legal sale. Part of seed to sale tracking is being authorized authorized to carry that seed through to the sale. And you're going to need a couple hundred thousand dollars to be authorized, especially under legalized recreational pot. Oh, I know they say it's five thousand dollars. But read the damn thing. It's five thousand dollars to grow. It leads everything else up to the county. Go into Colorado, go into Washington State, go into Washington, D.C. Hell, go up to Alaska with a damn near nobody, and you're paying 150 to $300,000 to just get a license from the county to open your little pot shop. Oh, but the profits are so good! Well, yeah, $25, $30 a gram. Profits better be good. Twenty-five dollars a gram. Somebody better be driving a Maserati and have a new boat. Now I'm not talking a little boat. I'm talking, you know, break out a ten thousand dollar bill repair, you know, on that boat, a yacht. Man, people, in nineteen seventy six. A lid was going for twenty five to thirty bucks. Now, this is a glad sandwich bag filled to the lid between an ounce and a quarter and an ounce and a half. And this was Colombian gold, Acapulco gold, Panama red. If you wanted Mexican ditch weed, you could buy that all day long for ten, fifteen bucks an ounce. So yeah, you know from Twenty five to thirty dollars an ounce in nineteen seventy five to a mere forty years later to twenty five to thirty five dollars a gram. Hmm, that's progress. We all could use progress like that, can't we? Good thing our wages have kept up to those prices. Oh, that's right, they haven't. Hell, if wages had it kept up to silver, just silver, you'd be making $17 an hour. If they kept up to the cost of living, you'd be at least 22 and a half. Now, I understand the whole idea. We need a, you know, people think they need a minimum wage. Um... But a minimum wage also means a maximum wage for you, the slave guy. Oh, sorry, they call you in the employee, but you're just a slave. So your minimum wage means maximum wage. No, oh, we we this job pays between seven twenty five and seven seventy five. And you get a nickel raise every year. My golly, you'll be living like a king soon. Welcome to Recreational Legalized Pot with the minimum wage bud tending jobs. You forget how stingy flipping McDonald's, Walmart don't even pay you people enough to survive. Hell, I started out in the telecommunications industry in 1985. I started at 14.75 an hour. In six weeks, I was running a crew making 20, 18, 19, 20 bucks an hour. 
plus bonuses, benefits, per diems. And I took my last telecommunications job here eight years ago. I'm lucky to squeeze 12 out of those bastards. And that's with 30 years of experience. Oh, but they were all driving new trucks. All that management, everybody had a brand new Ford, a brand new Dodge. All their workers, 10-year-old crap that could barely get them to work and back. Yeah, yeah, they made all the money, all right. <laughs> they just didn't pass it on to the actual employees. So, Yeah, you go in there, you do that slave wagers. You do that for that guy that's got the hundred and fifty, two hundred, three hundred thousand dollars to open up that hempcrete factory, open up that dispensary, open up that pot shop, open up that you know smokehouse. You you spend that money and be that slave because that's all you're gonna get. More slave jobs for more slave thoughts for more slave wages for more slaves. Meanwhile, the people actually opening up the businesses are going to be the brother-in-laws of the prosecutors, the brother-in-laws of the judges, the brother-in-laws of the chief police chief, the brother-in-laws of the doctors or the doctors themselves. Because, well, the government's going to give them pharmaceutical control of the marijuana plantation. Don't think so? <laughs> you think they're going to take it from Schedule 1 to Schedule 4 because it's less harmful than heroin? You're flipping high. They'll take it to Schedule 2, leave it in complete control of the damn um, pharmaceutical companies, and say, well, we're researching it now. Give us 30 years and we might know something more. And that's the baby step. That's the next baby step. And that baby step is started with recreational legalized pot. I don't give a crap who's passing it. Who's selling it and what state they're doing in it? Recreational legalized pot is a one dog topic. It only talks about one topic. It only can talk to one topic. They're supposed to be legalizing hemp in these damn things, but yet you don't hear anybody talking about hemp. They're just talking about, oh, go get high recreational. Yeah, what fun. You know, oh, we're going to research the hemp. We're going to do the hemp. Well, what happened to the hemp bill that was supposed to go through on its own a couple of years? Oh, that's right. It got co-opted by government and then pretty much squashed skilled. Yeah, oh boy, we got hemp research. Suckers got to go get their hemp out of or, uh, Kentucky. Yeah, we can we can build three hemp blocks and build a little bit. Look, isn't it cool? We've researched it. We study it. Oh, we got to wait 20 years to see if it breaks down before we can call it a study. Yeah, that was a great hemp bill. Sorry, guy. I know you tried really hard, whoever you are. You worked really hard. You got played, and you still win it. You should have just drugged the damn thing out and used it to beat them over the head with it. You cannot pacify perverts, people, by giving them little children. They're perverts. They're pedophiles. You give them a little kid, you just like may as well give them an ice cream cone with you know cherry on top and whipped cream. <clears throat> we cannot, cannot, should not, shall not be so foolish to give this government what it needs you to give it to them. Because it cannot take it itself. It needs you. You do not need it. I dare any one of you to come out here and give me an absolute situation where the government has made something better for the massive amount of people. Now, there's times when they've made things better, but I guarantee your name wasn't the CEO of the company that it was made better for. You might have had your last name, but it wasn't you, now was it? And if it was, well, you're part of the legalization crowd and probably getting your back scratched. So, yeah, you know, legalized recreational marijuana, man, it's a one-dog show. That pony only got one and it's got a broken leg. You know, you know what you're supposed to do with horses that have broken legs? Put them down and put them out of their misery. You guys are talking about one thing. The very last thing that should be talked over in this state, legalized recreational marijuana, marijuana pot, 
dope. Cannabis even. Why do you think the people are so damn foolish that they need to buy your bullarkey about the baby step that must be recreational dope because oh, it's only a baby step and they won't allow it. Well, like I said last week, people, in the week before, if you remember it, if you can hear it, and it was actually one of the broadcasts that went out, when you say they won't allow it, I'm going to translate that for you. I won't allow it for myself because I can't trust myself. I need the government to tell me how to run my life. They won't allow it. That's what you're saying. You are they. The Constitution, the CAFR, they all say the people are the highest authority. Not the governor. Not the Constitution even. Not even the legislator. And certainly not the head of the committee who won't let pot out of this committee because this, this is going to make it legal. A cute, 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 cute. Yeah. So yeah, we, this is well. I, I can't. I just can't believe the lack of depth. People, grow up. Look past that joint at the end of your fingers. This state government will not do anything for you. They will do it for themselves. Some of you might be okay. A bunch of you are gonna need some KY. And. A big ass retainer because well the fountainheads will get you through it like they did for the last five years. All right, it's time. I need a break. I'm gonna light this nasty ass cigarette, and we're gonna listen to No Control. No Control. Yeah, No Control. Why not? I know. I'm busy, folks. Give me a couple days. I've got other stuff coming on, and I see a bunch of free music that I should be able to play without problems. I'm gonna start adding that on. For those of you out there listening, anybody that wants to call in, we can talk about last weekend's High Times event. They played it. They made it. It's only opinions. Let's have yours. Anybody want to talk about oh, the Constitution, legalized recreational pot, repeal, abrogation, prohibition, Michigan, call. Call in number for the guest, 646-668-2239. If you're one of the lawyers out there, Please, I'll even let you on the air. I won't ban you. I'll let you speak your piece. And then I'll finish your sentences and let everybody know why we're talking the real thing and not, you know, the right thing and not just the right now thing. So enjoy this little bit of song while I break my lungs and enjoy a little bit out.
they ain't 100% always backed up, but they're not missed. There's absolute evidence everywhere proving this, especially in the last 10 years, which makes me really, you know, ask, well, how could you write this article three years ago or two years ago in 2013 there, Russ? I would hope that you would give a follow-up article, especially if you this, this radio play, this podcast I'm doing gets back to you about calling your absolute unlearned bullcrap out. I would hope you'd write a updated piece in correcting all your screwed up myths. Now, bunk number or number one says debunk presidential quotes. Says Thomas Jefferson wasn't toking on his back veranda. Oh, really now? That's why he went to China and risked his life to get hemp seeds out of China? Because at the time, hemp was illegal to export out of China under penalty of death because it was such a important commodity emperor in China at the time. So maybe he wasn't smoking it out his back veranda, but he smoked it everywhere else. It was well known that Thomas Jefferson used cannabis and smoked it. And as far as your second, that Abraham Lincoln wasn't smoking weed on his porch playing his horn or harmonica. Oh, were you there? <laughs> Just because the, you don't want you know the people who qualify these things do not want to verify the actual penmanship of the letter that is sitting in the manufacturers of the old Horner factory. All they got to do is get a handwriting expert and let the handwriting expert verify the letter where Abraham Lincoln says, I often sit on my porch with a full of sweet Indian hemp and play my horner guitar. There's nothing more relaxing. You know, that's a ver- not verbatim, it's a paraphrase. But a handwriting expert will solve all that, yet nobody from the official world wants to get send one, and they won't accept the one that was done back in the day from the company who you know, had it checked, and the guy said, yes, this is Abraham signatures, Abraham Lincoln's signature in handwriting. So, you know, you're fully wrong. I'm sorry. It's vaguely wrong, but it's still wrong. Um, you know, you can say these quotes have been debunked, but, well, you've been debunked, too. You must have looked at Snoops to get your qualifi- qualified answers for that, huh? Number two, hemp will save the world. They say this is a myth. Yes, it's an amazingly versatile plant for food, fuel, fiber, and medicine. Hmm. Food. Something every person needs. Fuel. Something we need to run the world so we can get things like food and medicine. Fiber. Something we need for things like clothes and materials and all sorts of good, wholesome things like chairs and plastics. You know, that fuel one. You know, if it's made out of crude oil, it can be made out of hemp oil. Everything's made out of crude oil, even your medicines. And then medicines. So, oh my goodness, they use food, fuel, fiber, medicines as if they're just for nonchalant kind of things. You know, you can get along without those. They're not really that important. Oh, but 31 countries already grow hemp. Oh, by golly, I must be wrong. It's just the United States banning it that or banning it dooms Earth. Yeah, then they go on, when there was a hemp phone, hemp iPhone, well, Russ, plastic is better when it's made out of hemp, you fool, unlearned, uneducated, yellow journalistic fool, everything in the iPhone, except for the metal, could be made out of hemp, including the battery power. Just last year, now I know 2014 is a little after 2013, but you think your silly patootie could have done a little research and found the guy in Canada who's been doing hemp and turning it into a superconductor at $500 a ton. 
compared to $2,000 a gram for the superconductor we use now called graphene made out of carbon. So, yeah, hemp can save the world, you unlearned fool. Number three, one of my favorite, cannabis cures cancer. Yes, we've seen TH kill, kill cancer cells in petri dishes, and many people swear hemp oil cures their cancer. But cancer is complex and varied. Saying cannabis cures camper is premature, like red mold cures infections. Russ, that's the stupidest fucking thing I've ever heard in my life. Did you pull that out of your butthole? Did you have your head up your asshole when you wrote this thing? Oh my god. It's premature, like saying bread mold cures infections. I know I could put this out there, and I'm sure somebody will get around to calling me in. Who's had cancer that cannabis cured? Let's give Russ a little education, shall we? Legalization will save X dollars in law enforcement. That's number four calculates the cost of cops, courts, jails, and then figures if pot arrests are part of those costs, we'd save that much money. Except that bureaucrats don't return unspent budgets. They spend them. Cops, courts, and jails will still get that money. They just spend it on real criminals. (laughs) Illogical? Terrible premise in a blatant appeal to authority. I'm too dumb. I need the government to tell me how to do it. Yeah, Russ, that's what you said in number four when you said legalization will save X numbers in law enforcement. It ain't going to save X money in law enforcement. It's going to save way more than that. Because 60% of the arrests are nonviolent possession de- arrest only. And 80 to 90 percent of those arrests are cannabis only. We'll say 80 percent. So 90 percent of that, 80 percent of that, 60 people who are in jail going to court are nonviolent cannabis. Or that's half of the court budget, Russ. And you think they're going to stop busting, go out and actually arrest pedophiles, who would be mostly their bosses? You know, thieves who are mostly their paycheck owners, people who write their checks at the banks, perverts, tyrants, rapists, Russ, Michigan's got 80,000 rape kits sitting on the desk for 10 years. You don't think taking the cannabis arrest out of there, they'll actually go out and do those tests? You're a fool. They ain't going to do those tests either. So, yeah, there will be a savings of money before it even gets to prison. Now, I don't know about California there, Rust Buddy, but in Michigan, it's about $87,000 a year to keep somebody in prison. Now, I don't know about you, but I imagine a lot of Michigan taxpayers would be very, very pleased to pay less taxes because... 60% of the people in jail aren't going to jail. Well, we'll say 55% of the people in jail aren't going to jail, aren't even getting arrested. You think they're going to go chase that money after real criminals? That's the yellow journalism part. You're just unlearned and foolish. Number five. This is the the last little good one. I can kind of agree a little bit on some pretense here. Marijuana is harmless. He says, nothing ingested is harmless. You can die from drinking too much water or eating 10 raw potatoes. Yeah, Russ, you can slip your fat ass in the tub and hit your head and die there, too. Some experience cyclical vomiting syndrome, long-term cannabis use. Never seen it. Never heard about it. You're the first person besides the government that I've ever seen anybody on this side of the fence say, Long-term cannabis use will cause people to puke all the time. Pot not advised for people with some mental illnesses if you're smoking. Yeah, you're talking schizophrenia, Russ, you lying piece of yellow journalist crap. Schizophrenics seek out cannabis 
after they're schizophrenic, not before. It doesn't cause any problems. You know that. I know that. They know that. The problems is your perception with what it's doing. It's your problem, Russ. Your problem, Mr. Governor. Your problem, Mr. Attorney General. Your problem, Mr. Judicial Chair. It is your problem with your limited, unlearned, unimaginative, unfounded, in fact, opinion based on crap and propaganda. 1,500 pounds in 15 minutes to maybe find a lethal dose. I dare anyone to try. You'll drown or die from overeating long before you die from the cannabis. Can cannabis kill? Sure. Be, uh, be on the wrong side of the gun during a raid at the wrong address, or even the right address. Be on the wrong side of the gun at a drug deal that got cannabis involved in the drug deal. That has nothing to do with the cannabis. That's got to do with the money. Marijuana is harmless. The only thing marijuana harms is stifled competition. Because if marijuana was repealed, competition would be available to go out there in the nylon companies owned by DuPont, the oil companies, Surprisingly sold out by Standard in the Rockefeller family a couple of years back. They got rid of their crude oil interest. Interesting when it was still $100 a barrel just before it dropped. Now it's down to 40 Boy, that's some shrewd business dealings. They're so smart on the market. How did they get out of the oil before the, before the crash of the oil area come in? Hmm. Don't worry, it's just coincidence. Nothing to see here. Move along. So, yes, hemp can save the world. It can do everything Jack Hare said and more. Jack was getting into the, the positions of the spiritual side of it. He was finding out the medical sides of it. But when Jack first wrote The Emperor Has No Clothes, he came in with so much information, he just didn't take a look at the bigger picture. He was right on the money, but he was still short a couple feet. He started finding that couple feet after he had his you know, issues, his heart attack, his stroke. He started finding that other couple feet and making them up really quick. The latest version of The Emperor Has No Clothes was issued here not too long ago. Um, I, don't, I could not say if it was before or after Jack passed. He had a new book in the works that he was trying to get out after you know, when he passed. But you can find The Emperor Has No Clothes, or I'm sorry, The Emperor Wears No Clothes. You find that book, you read the 1980 version, the 1990 version, the 2000, 2010, 2012, 2015 version, whatever version you got. Every citation you needed is in there. It was in there. Russ. Russ, did you hear me? Everything you said that was wrong was cited in The Emperor Wears No Clothes, you fool, which is why I call you a yellow journalist, just like that other journalist that's around this, this state, likes to throw his little three cents out there and think everybody cares. I'm sorry, dude. <laughs> Your three cents is founded on gibberish half the time, nonsense the other time, half the time, and the other half of the time, it says it's founded on an agenda that doesn't include the majority of the people. Just my opinion. I can put in my opinion. Opinions like assholes. We all got them. We can all use them. It's when you don't use them and you get full of shit that you tend to be a problem. So... Yeah, that was a nice little article by High Times. I read that thing, you know, and I'm like, really? Of course, I didn't realize it was written in 2013, but Jesus, the damn thing up. They should have struck it. They should have took it out. They should have, you know, fired Russ Belleville because he's a dumbass. And to go into that, I'm going to read you something on... The U.S. National Library of Medicine, PMC, 
part of the PubMed publications. Cannabidiol inhibits human glioma cell migration through a cannabinoid receptor independent mechanism. Russ, did you hear me? High times. Did you hear me? Cannabidiol, that would be CBD if you didn't know, boys, girls, over there at high times in Russ. Cannabidiol inhibits human glioma cell migration. Now, if you're not intelligent on the medical terms, Russ, in high times, glioma cell is brain cancer usually inoperable. But that's okay. Believe Russ over the United States National Library of Medicine and National Institutes of Health. Because Russ at high times tells you it doesn't cure cancer. Well, he must be right. What does these studies tell us? They're just studies. They don't know nothing. Russ at high times and high times are the experts. They're the authorities. Appeal to their authority because they'll tell you the government said no. Golly, here's another one. It's a patent, Russ, in high times. It's a patent from January 14, 2003. It was filed June 1, 2001. It's even had a paid fee status. Nervous system manipulation by electro... Oh, no, that's the wrong one. <laughs> Foolish me. Okay, Russ, you're going to get a pass on that one. But the whole point is, we've all seen the patent on THC's ability to shrink tumors. We've all seen the bioengineers, but Russ, the journalist, knows so much more than the bioengineers showing us how THC heals cancer. It's healing the cancer. Now, she didn't say that because she wanted to sound like Ahmed the Karas and say, I kill you. No, she said it kills it because her accent, and she was defining and emphasizing the fact that it healed the cancer cell, Russ, in high times, it didn't pat it on its back and give it some, you know, chemicals and say, oh, go grow over there. No, it killed it. I kill you. I squish you, head. Squishy, squish you. It killed it, Russ, in high times. The best thing that can happen to you is people stop buying your crap and flush it down the toilet after they've wiped because that's what it's becoming. Crap. As much propaganda as the government can handle to put out. So here's a great article I read. Medical marijuana industry regulated by HIPAA? But golly, I thought our fountainhead said HIPAA had nothing to do with it. Put out August 20th, 2015. This is actually a regular, you know, fairly new and long um, fairly long article, but I'm going to read through it a little bit here. Is medical marijuana protected under HIPAA? Like any controlled substances, medical marijuana requires a robust system of patient verification to make certain that patients who are receiving prescriptions are, ver- are identified properly. Medical dispensaries use computerized patient verification systems in the pursuit of this goal. What, but what many people do not know is that a patient verification, verification system is also subject to the Health Insurance Apportability and Accountability Act of 8, 1996, otherwise known as HIPAA, H-I-P-A-A, regulations. In fact, under HIPAA, medical marijuana is treated almost exactly the same as any other prescription or treatment. Because of its reputation, the medical cannabis industry is diligent about keeping up with the confines of federal law and in doing so relies heavily on these patient verification systems. (coughs) These systems usually contain protected health information, PHI, such as medical record numbers, patient contact information, including addresses, diagnosis codes, and other personal information used for verification, such as driver's license numbers. 
At a glance, a few factors will give away if a business is serious about their compliance. For one, their website will have a secure socket layer. That is where at the front of the HTTP, you or in HTTP, you see an S, meaning secure, or a yellow area thing, SSL. Um, but a secure socket layer certificate. This means that your address bar will show a lock-in or be green to indicate a website traffic is encrypted. In addition, the provider will need to host their data in a HIPAA-compliant data center. Having the data on-site or in a typical server location is a flagrant violation of HIPAA. If you are concerned, you should be aware that violating HIPAA security regulations is a serious crime and often includes fines for the violator. Understand the differences between standard web hosting versus HIPAA compliant hosting to ensure that you have the correct type of provider. So, Michigan dispensaries, you got your information on HIPAA compliant servers? Oh, you probably don't. You should. Part of the law. Oh, but policy of the local cops says it's not respect. Hey, even the Michigan state government says, oh, it's not HIPAA protected, so it's not HIPAA compliant. You don't need to be on a HIPAA server. Or so they've said. I've heard people in government, you know, spewing their opinion. Oh, this is medical marijuana. It's not HIPAA. I'm sorry, boys and girls. If it's medical, <laughs> it's HIPAA. So... You want to make sure you're on a HIPAA compliant server there, ladies and gentlemen, if you're in a dispensary. You don't want to face that one. They're pretty serious on HIPAA. Medical dispensaries fall under the auspices of HIPAA and are required to keep confidential all of their PHI that is collected during a customer transaction. So when the cops bust these dispensaries and they pull the computers and they're getting your HIPAA protected information, they're not getting it off HIPAA-protected computer systems. The information that is given to qualify for a medical marijuana card in the first place is, so cover, is also covered under HIPAA and can't be released without a patient's written consent or a court subpoena. Did you hear that, prosecutors? Everybody you prosecuted off records from a dispensary that you've busted illegally Because public, or I'm sorry, public nuisance is not, oh, constitutional law. The information that is given to qualify for a medical marijuana card in the first place is also covered under HIPAA and can't be released without the patient's written consent or a court subpoena. To do so even accidentally would be a violation of HIPAA and most likely would result in a fine. However, if a credit card is used when purchasing marijuana from a dispensary, completely restricting this camp transaction information is not possible because, well, credit cards are not HIMPA compliant. There are exceptions. It is also worthwhile noting that Visa and MasterCard have recently stopped allowing medical marijuana purchases or have used hype for transaction rates to make accepting credit cards not feasible. Um, the article is over on LinkedIn.com. You can do uh, in the Pulse area, medical marijuana industry regulated HIPAA. You could probably just do a search for LinkedIn medical marijuana HIPAA and come up with it. Um, that's the first couple paragraphs. There's about five more, six more. Goes in pretty good detail. Excellent, excellent little one to read through because it really does give you the basic information. So, yeah, over the weekend, we've... Uh, you know, had the funds and festivities and the people puking and all the other stuff going on out there. Um, I hope you guys had fun that went out there. You know, I know a lot of people went and had fun. It's a good time. It's fun seeing all the people. That's why I would have want, liked to have went to go see all the people. But we got to draw a line in how we support things. And if I'm showing up someplace that I don't support, and I'm bringing, you know, dollars into their business that I'm trying not to support by showing up, then I'm kind of supporting them. So I stayed home. 
I didn't. I was was gonna do an anti show, but I decided that nah, not even worth doing that. There's enough people that know the score. The fact that it was pretty empty all weekend, really. Uh, you know, I seen it on TV five Saturday night, folks, and it was kind of empty out there, man. You know, there was a lot of people there. They were all heading. So yeah, you know it. You want to pass recreational legalized marijuana? Just my opinion. Just my thoughts. You're going to have to start acting like adults. You're going to have to start dealing with this like adults. You're going to have to look past that joint at the end of your fingers. Because you may get your signatures, (laughs) but you ain't getting 51% of the vote. Not with the way you're running this, man. I know too many people that are saying, yeah, I might vote to legalize it if it's the only thing there. And they weren't kidding. (laughs) Over half the people I talk to say, if it's the only thing there, I don't know. Probably not. Because they see the truth. They don't want the government up their batuki anymore. They've got them up their buttholes enough. And you want to give them even more control? By giving the legalized recreational pot to the government? Good luck with that, guys and gals. Uh, You Democrats out there, you liberal Democrats, sit out there and scream, especially you women. Get out of my body, government. It's not your call, government. It's my choice to kill the fetus, government. You just need to support me. Yet you're willing to turn around and give government control of your very endocannabinoid system by legalizing recreational pop because it's the baby step and it's the right thing right now to do. It's the right now thing. So we got to do it because it's the right now thing. Well, golly, the train went out the tracks in the other states and we just need to follow suit. Think about this, ladies and gentlemen. Democrats, please. Republicans, you're a bunch of fools, too. You are begging the government to take control of this, and you're going to give it to them. Because they cannot take control of it, and you're begging them to take control of it. But that's the secret. They can't take control of it. But they can sure trick you into giving them control of it, and you're doing a good job by legalizing recreational marijuana. Because this is going to be the only last step. There will be no more steps. There will be no more baby steps. There will be no more leaps. If this one goes through and you want to change it, you better forget your First Amendment and start looking to your second. You've, this government's had control of cannabis for 80 years. The ultimate control. Prohibition. If laws, more laws worked, if laws worked, period, there wouldn't be people dying in this country from murder, period, for any reason. Murder is against the law. But that don't stop people from killing people. It's a moral of law that you're breaking. Morality don't stop people from killing people. So more laws is not going to stop more people from going to jail because of recreational legalized pot. It's going to make more people go to jail because that's what more laws do. More laws create more criminals. If there is no law, you cannot be a criminal charged under that law. You are not a criminal. So how is making more laws going to make less criminals? Anybody who gives a person under 21 years of age, yes, they've got 21, they want to say 18, but you need a doctor's recommendation if you're 18, 19, 21. So anybody that sells, gives, I don't care if you're their child's parent and your child has severe epilepsy, severe autism, and cancer, you give your can your sick child cannabis, you're going to jail. Don't listen to them. 
because you're going to need your two doctor signatures, and boy, they're just giving those out like M&Ms, aren't they? So I know a lot of you people are going to say, screw that doctor recommendation. I don't need it to save my son, my daughter, my mother, my father, my nephew that's under 18, whatever. When you pass recreational legalized pot, you're going to be putting more parents in jail than you did before. And guess what? Now they committed a crime against a child. And they're going to go real easy on those guys in the new court system of punishment for outside the Medical Marijuana Act that's being rewritten with the 75% supermajority that's coming down the pike in legislation. So, yeah. You talk about one thing out there, ladies and gentlemen, when you talk about recreational legalized pot, and that's the only thing you talk about, recreational legalized pot. You don't talk about the cancer. You don't talk about the epilepsy. You don't talk about the weight loss, the diabetes help. You don't talk about the the Alzheimer's, the dementia. You don't talk about the healing of the broken bones. That was just a story that went around three weeks ago by proven study. You don't talk about... THC healing cancer cells. You talk about the joint at the end of my fingers because recreational legalized pot is legal, dude. We did it. Wait, we won. Officer, why am I going to jail? We won. (laughs) God, I'm a sarcastic asshole and I enjoy it. The truth and the facts go best with some laughter and sarcasm. Because y'all don't like them with a little bit of salt and vinegar. But these are the facts. You give anybody under 18, they're going to prosecute you to the full extent of the law. And don't think the Michigan Recreational Legalized Pot Bill is only going to let you do a couple of years. Oh, no, they're going to throw the book at you because you are harming a child. Unless you're Jared from Subway, <laughs> then you're going to get a couple of years in you know, half as much time as just the guy who's a pothead, let alone the guy who's a pothead and sold it to a kid. Yeah. Wake up, folks. Open your eyes. Get some coffee. Smoke a wake-up blunt because you are not paying attention close enough. You are not looking at the big picture because you can only see that joint at the end of your fingers which is going to get you arrested today. Oh, it's going to get you arrested later. But it's only going to be a $100 fine, we're told. If that's so, why is imprisonment listed four or five times in some of these deals? Because you're going to go to prison. For 13 plants, but not 12. 12's okay, 13's bad. Put some more arbitrary numbers out. Two and a half ounces. Let's put some more arbitrary ideas out there. Is that medical cannabis? Is that hemp? Or is that recreational pot? Now, I don't make the laws. I just follow them. And the Constitution says you need a doctor's recommendation to have those 12 cannabis plants, sir, ma'am. I need to see your Michigan Medical Marijuana Registry card. Oh, you don't have one? Well, can I see your doctor's paperwork recommending you have that? Oh, you don't have one? Well, I'm going to have to arrest you. Oh, I know you passed legislatively enacted recreational marijuana But see, son, I don't make the laws. I just enforce them. And you're going to have to let the judge figure that one out. Because I don't know if that's recreational pot. It can't be medical pot because you don't have a doctor's recommendation. And the Constitution and the Medical Marijuana Act, that's part of the Constitution, says, well, you know, recommendation. And the courts have said no recommendation. Well, you're just a dirty dope dealer. I need to arrest you. So could you kindly just... Submit to my authority. Imprisonment listed in the recreational bills. Listed right in there. Not no imprisonment. Not get out of jail. But go 
to jail, pay the fees, do not pass go, do not collect $200, and hope to hell you know somebody's got bail money and retainer money. Unless you're one of the guys that can open up one of the businesses. But that's okay, you can grow all you want for $5,000. <laughs> it's only going to be $5,000, boys and girls. You're going to have a free-for-all for for $5,000. So, yeah, we're at 1020. That means it's five hours from 420 somewhere. And it's always 420 somewhere. Because I got a clock in my dresser that stopped at 420, and it broke right there. (laughs) That's where it stopped running. So it's always 420 somewhere. Yeah, I know this stuff can sound kind of crazy, folks. I go off on little rants and little triads. Please try to prove me wrong. I beg you, I implore you, don't believe me. I don't want you to believe me. I want you to go look and actually read the bill and see where it says imprisonment. Go look and read the bill and see where it says you deal with a minor. That's 21 and under. You're going to go to jail. Unless there's two doctor's recommendations. And yeah, there's so many doctors in this state willing to sign medical recommendations for kids. No imprisonment's put in there a few times. So if you're not going to go to jail, why are they using the term imprisonment? seems kind of counterproductive. So I'm going to take a quick little break. We're going to listen to another song. Yeah, I know. But that's okay. You'll get over it. Actually, we're going to listen to two. I'm going to play two of them back-to-back here, I think. Shorter ones. Yeah, we'll do shorter ones. We'll do this one, and then I'll do the next one. Call in number 646-668-2239. If you want to come on the air, push one, and it will bring you into the host queue. Um, Anybody else in chat? No, we just got the one guest, and I think I know who it is. Thanks for hanging on. Thanks for listening. We appreciate you here. Um, I know there's people out there listening. Um, and I know there's people out there that appreciate what we're doing. Uh, I've gotten a lot of compliments, and today I got a nice anonymous donation for the radio station of $100. Outstanding. Thank you, Mr. or Mrs. Anonymous. That $100 for this radio station is going to help keep us going, not only up until we start this ballot petition, but through to the end couple more of those will be locked in for the year. Five dollars works. Now this is not part of the abrogate prohibition Michigan. This is strictly the radio, you know, station, Michigan Can Nightly Radio Podcast that you're listening to right here. Um the donation came in to help keep this radio station on the air because we need to talk about things nobody else wants to talk about. They all want to talk about the one horse pony. And there's a thousand horses in this race, people. And they're all more important than the last horse that we're talking about. So, thank you for the $100 donation to the Michigan Can Radio Network. We really appreciate it, and we're going to put that to great use. And you'll get a thank you card, Anonymous. And I'll even let you know where I'm putting the money so you know it went to good use. So, with that said, let's kick off this two little little uh, chicks. There's going to be a quick little intro and then I'm going to crick in to, to change your mind.
second part was to change mine. So, got about 25 minutes left and a few extra seconds. Went through some things here. I guess I'll spend the rest of the time, instead of ranting on the silliness, let's, you know, look past that joint at the end of our fingers and start talking about the big work, the important things. Abrogating these laws. Getting rid of prohibition on cannabis. We got this drug war kicked off in 71, 72. Studies started in 73, concluded in 74, proved that TAC shrunk tumors. The war on cancer kicked off in 71, thanks to Nixon. You know, that was was something supposed to be good that they were trying to do, but we all seen how that worked out. So the war on drugs found the weapon to win the war on cancer, and they hit it off. And then doubled down on the war on drugs and arrested the people who were using the weapon to beat the war on cancer. And this has been going on since 1975, folks. Since they've known that, 1974, since they've known THC, yeah, Russ, in high times, the government knows THC shrinks tumors, and tumors are either benign, non cancerous, or malignant, cancerous. But guess what, boys and girls? When they're malignant, rust and high dimes, they're still tumors and they still shrink. Fools. So, yeah, we got this whole setup here. You know, we got this war on drugs. We can't beat the whole war on drugs. And we do have issues, but I agree with everybody else that we should, these should not be handled in a criminal nature manner. Anybody that's out there who's been looking at addiction, I mean, really studying addiction and the information that's out there, and the, you would have run across Dr. Cowhart. Now, Dr. Cowhart was growing up in the 80s. He's not much older, or he, I think he's actually a little younger than I am. I'm 49. I think he might be between 46 and 52, so he might be a little older than I am. But he grew up in the hood in Miami. And he'll tell you it was the hood. Crack was everywhere. He was doing crack. He was slinging crack. And then he got in trouble. He had a cop that seemed to help him out. He kind of backed away. And he won, you know, he he did a full about face. And now he wasn't only about, you know, not about drugs or dealing them. They were all bad. They all need to be gone. Everybody who's doing them is criminal, and we need to put them in jail. And so he went 180 to the other side of the fence. <laughs> and then he went to school and got learned, or, you know, educated. And then he realized he was educated and didn't know a damn thing. Then he started looking at the stuff and became learned. That's when he realized his education was mostly a lie, a deception. And yeah, they were using fundamental facts, but they were lying by omission. A lot of the stuff he learned was not true. That he learned was fundamentally proven fact. It was the way it is. And he learned it was a lie. The rat pushing in the cage, pushing the lever till he does cocaine and dies was one of the first ones and biggest ones that he went... I was lied to by the people that gave me my Ph.D. He's got a doctor. He is a doctor, you know, psychologist, and, and um, yeah, I think a full, full-fledged full Ph.D. psychologist. He's got a Ph.D. But he was lied to by the very people that taught him, trained him to be a Ph.D. It was only with his open mind background history, he was on the other side of the tracks for a while, and his willingness to put aside what he was educated in so he could become learned, do you learn the facts about addiction? And the facts are 85, 90% of the people who are said are being are addicts aren't, because they get along just fine. They don't have any major issues. Sure, they could be doing better if they weren't doing these drugs often. 
but they go to work, they pay their bills, you know, they they buy food, buy electric, go out with the friends, take care of the family. They just do certain drugs a lot. Are they addicted? Maybe. Is it dangerous? Not to most people. It's only that 10 or 15% that become physically addicted. And this could be a physical addiction to shopping because the buzz you get shopping for people spending money they know they don't have. I had an ex-wife that had to do that once in a while. She loved spending money we didn't have, man. And I swear she was just on cloud nine when she was doing it. She was addicted to it. It gave her a dopamine rush. Yeah, addiction can be addiction to anything. People are addicted to air. And I dare anybody to prove me wrong. You get anybody to try to quit their air addiction and see how long they live. I guarantee you they're going to have withdrawals and they will flop on the floor until they turn blue and die. They're addicted to air. <laughs> or addicted to water, too. Although... You can do too much water and overdose. Then you can do too much air and overdose, too. Can't do too much cannabis and overdose, though, by golly. So much for that harm. So, yeah, you know, we need to repeal this crap emission. We cannot fight the drug war in the country. We can fight the drug war in the state. And if you really want to talk about a baby step, ladies and gentlemen... Get the nonsense of legalized recreational pot baby stuff out of your heads. We did our marijuana cannabis baby step with the Michigan Medical Marijuana Act, which, again, was not a baby step. We stepped right out hard and firm onto the platform with that. There was no baby steps involved. If you want to talk something and, you know, say that you need to be a part of a baby step to feel like you need to support the right thing, which I know a lot of you do. I hear everybody out there, I mean, I don't think I've heard anybody actually say, oh, if it was on the ballot, I would vote no for it. I wouldn't vote for a repeal if it was on the ballot. You all would vote for it. We know this. It's not utopia. Because it's the utopia, then we lost utopia in 1937, and we and it was stolen from us. So we had utopia, and now we don't. So if you want to say it's utopia and dreaming, well, remember, this is just the way it was for thousands of years up until 1937, in at least hundreds of years in this country. Three to four hundred, at least. Longer. Indians had hemp long before Columbus was found in the Philippines, or Guam, or wherever the hell it was they had to pull his dumb ass off the island on, or he would have died there. So, yeah, you know, we need to repeal this stuff. We aren't going to be able to do antibacterial hospital sheets with recreational legalized pot, ladies and gentlemen. We're not going to be able to do two acres of hemp into three bear or 300 gallons of fuel with two and a half ounces and 12 plants and legalized recreational pot. Oh, yeah, I know the $5,000 and the You know, individual counties setting up whatever costs they want for a a business license and, you know, the extra money it's going to cost for the seed-to-sale tracking that we're going to have to pay for and the monitoring system of the cameras and the audio is going to be 24-7 in every business. And if you want a business out of your home, you're going to have to put those state-operated, taxpayer-funded camera systems in taxpayer payroll to the department that's going to have to be created and manned and staffed and administrated by the government, by your tax dollars, to run this program. Because I guarantee you, by the time the state sets up the program the way they want it, that 10% excise fee is not going to cover pot for potholes. It won't have anything left for the schools. It's going to take that 10% plus another 10% out of your pockets just for the state to administer recreational legalized pot. They were paying $800 for a hammer in 1990, folks. 
eight hundred dollars for a hammer that you were buying for seven bucks, five bucks in many cases. You think that ten percent is going to go to potholes or schools? <laughs> Yeah, right. Mm hmm. And on that note, if the government has done so well with our tax money up until now, 10% sin tax on recreational pot might not be that big of a deal. But please, somebody go to the, 19, or the 2014 CAFR for the state of Michigan, C A F R. CAFR report for the state of Michigan 2014 was put out in September, I believe. Somebody go find that CAFR, and you go in there, and you look at where the money went, and find just one, just one expenditure of to your tax dollars that was actually valuable to you. in a personal, direct manner. And when you bring me that one or two, you will find, we're going to dig into them a little bit deeper, and you're going to find out how much you got screwed on that one or two you thought you did you so well. So yeah, you go out there, you look at those cappers, you look at those expenses, you find them and bring them to me. Tell, them, tell me how well they did for you, so we could look into it and see if they really did good for you. Or is it just your perception that you think they did well for you because you've been told what they you know what they've been doing, but that's really not what they're doing and where they're going. Scaffer will tell you a lot of that. So yeah, you know, tack pop for potholes, nonsense. Everybody's talking Colorado. Oh, Colorado bringing three hundred and fifty million dollars in the first three months. Man, I've seen fourteen different numbers by thirty five different uneducated and I think the state said in 2014 it bring in about $500 million all year. Of course, <laughs> you might be interested to go take a look at how much of that wasn't from taxes. From the you know, recreational sales. Go look at how much they bring in on their arrest for cannabis. Go look at how much Colorado and Washington had to spend in 2014 to regulate Legalize recreational dope. You're going to find when you look at how much the state expended in tax monies to administer, to monitor the computer systems and the camera systems and the audio systems, to inspect all the buildings, all the in licenses, to do all the background checks. I'm willing to bet that 30% syntax ain't covering as much as you are being told it is. Because you're being told, oh my God, it's the windfall. They got rose petals flying out their yang holes because they legalized recreational pot. But God, you know, I seem to remember just within the last month or two, oh, a good few stories about people arrested Losing their jobs. Hell, I've heard people from other states, you know, put up posts on Facebook. They went to Colorado. It all here happens here. Well, why they're a stone, they put up statements about them getting high. And then they got fired when they got back home. <laughs> because it wasn't quite private enough. So yeah, let's legalize that recreational dope. Let's tape that baby step into more government control, and more government authority over your body, and more government tyranny, and more government taxes because, damn it, Michigan wants to be taxed more, don't they? So yeah, pot for potholes, right. No, we need to get rid of this shit. Title. This act shall be titled the Abrogation of Cannabis Prohibition Act of Michigan. Definitions. All words contained in this act shall be given their broad and general definitions as understood by the electors per Article 9, Section 9, and Article 12, Section 2, 
as of the United or the State of Michigan Constitution and shall be defined by a Merriam Webster's or the Winston Simplified Dictionary. C. Clarifications. Cannabis is the English word that is documented as the proper word in agricultural, botanical, scientific disciplines and is considered the correct and proper terminology when referring to hemp, marijuana with an H, marijuana with a J, or numerous other names that are also known as being the cannabis plant. For all concerned and for understanding and brevity, cannabis will be used for the purposes of this act. While hemp, marijuana, marijuana, pot are acceptable synonyms, others such as sativa L, indica, rudialis, pot, weed, grass, just to name a few, are also suitable synonyms, synonyms, as are many others not noted in this act. D, scope. We the people hereby direct to abrogate state to abrogate all code immediately. Sorry, we we hereby the people direct the legislature to hereby to immediately abrogate all codes, directives, laws, mandates, and or policies concerning the prohibition, criminalized nature, and penalties levied for any raw cannabis, cannabis associations businesses or affiliations whatsoever so long as they are nonviolent in nature in the state of Michigan. We the people abrogate all imposed fees, fines, and penalties for any and all raw cannabis and cannabis associations as outlined herein. No additional excise taxes, regulations, special administrations, or state authorities shall be allowed or levied in perpetuity. All raw cannabis, cannabis-related goods, final product, and or services offered via the commercial and or retail marketplace shall follow the standard state retail tax codes and regulations as would be for all similar non-cannabis-related items by any general comparison. This shall include, as outlined with this act, any cannabis in any form or state or type whatsoever for use by any adult 18 years or older, the right to apply, craft, create, consume, deliver, develop, fashion, gift, grow, ingest, manifest, manufacture, mix, possess, produce, sell, transfer, and or transform into any composites, compounds, extracts, forms, items, and or raw products, including but not limited to the materials, mixtures, preparations, extractions, or sorts thereof for any, boca- any agricultural, botanical, developmental, industrial, manufacturer, medical, personal, research, testing, tile, and or for any products, services, or developments and use for any means or purposes so long as they are nonviolent in nature. Anything that inhibits, prohibits, or infringes upon any person in Michigan their constitutional right to consume, create, cultivate, deliver, develop, grow, ingest, manufacture, possess, process, propagate, own, research, sell, test, use in any form, any raw cannabis, or cannabis-related items whatsoever, in any amounts whatsoever, are hereby null and void, except as outlined within the entirety of this act. And that's where I'm going to stop right now with that. That is sections A, B, C, and D of the Abrogation of Cannabis Prohibition Act of Michigan, a.k.a. the Post-it Note Act right now. That won't be there. We won't be calling it the Post-it Note Act. That was just for shits and grins at the time because of the act, the opinion. Which, yes, I still, it is my opinion that the Missouri opinion from the Supreme Court indeed overturned McQueen because it stood in contrast to McQueen. In contrast, lawyers means what? 
tell us, please, what in contrast means in a court case, in a judge's opinion, from the Supreme Court? This hasn't been vetted yet. It is being vetted by qualified eyes, so don't none of you worry your little little eyes or little hairy whiskers about it. Lawyers, lawyers are looking at this. Competent lawyers outside the state of Michigan, they have nothing to venture in this, uh, this system. So yes, this is being looked at. It's going to be vetted properly by people who have the right legal eyes. Legal eyes. They're going to ensure it's properly structured. In the verbiage, everything's in its place. The rest of it reads right. The parts I read, do you read right? A is before B, B is before C, C is before D, and no part is out of place. And that's coming soon. Should be getting checked out hopefully any time. And if all's good, I'm with any luck. I might even get a clean bill of health or at least the report by the end of the month. And if it's clean, I'll be ready to send it to the state to the uh, board of uh, canvassers. Because if it's right when I get it back, everything's in proper place. The format's as easy as just cut, copy, and paste. 8 by 14 legal sheet. Everything's going to fit. There ain't going to be no trouble. I'm short, guys. I'm only 180 lines, maybe 145, 150 lines total, the whole thing. It doesn't change a lot of laws. For all those people out there going, oh, it does too much. They're going to cut it down because it does too much. You, If you're saying that, you haven't even read the Supreme Court case over the voters' situation that they were calling they needed the Constitutional Convention to make the changes that were being changed because it changed almost every part of the state constitution. That's why that one was shot down. This ain't going to be shot down. It does one thing. It repeals crimes, the fines, the fees, and the penalties for recreational, or I'm sorry, (laughs) for all cannabis. We don't need recreational. We don't need a little bit of baby step. We need to stand up, be the constitutionally minded Michigan adults, the parents, the proper authority of the state, the political power of the state, which is in you, the people. Me, the people. We, the people. So, we're down to a couple minutes. Got about two minutes and five seconds. I like kind of bouncing across the screen all over the place. I, I, I'm not really a go-by-the-card kind of guy. I, I like kind of freewheeling it. But when it's time to go by the card, the card is what we will go by, and we will dot every I, and we will cross every T. And we'll see you in November 2016, boys and girls. And for anybody out there listening, paperwork for the Statement of Organization was sent in and accepted by the state last week. We are an official organization. Abrogate Prohibition Michigan is recognized now. Question committee. Hurdles out of the way. They're starting to fall. Falling a few people trying to throw them up, but uh, we're just stepping over them, walking around them, kicking them right out of our way, or just burning them down because they're just useless anyways. So we are an official state committee for a ballot question. Language is pretty much crafted, being inspected, getting a good hard eye. I'm hoping by I would like to see by the end of the month, but I can't say for sure. But within a couple of weeks, we'll have the okay or this and this and that needs to be inspected and checked and, and retweaked and redefined. But it will be going to the... Board of Canvassers, when it is ready, which should be, I'm hoping, within the next two weeks. But if we got to retweak it, it may be another three weeks. So there it is. Language is on its way. It's getting eye viewed. Going to be, you know, inspected by proper and you know qualified folks. 
Nobody in Michigan, so there's no conflict of interest here. That was my biggest issue. Try, who, who do we go to? Who do we have inspect a legal bill when all the lawyers... So there it is. Michigan Cam Monday night's radio show. Come on back tomorrow night, 9 o'clock to 11 o'clock, and we're going to pick it up where we left off, and I'm going to see if maybe I can find and get ourselves a uh, guest in here to start going over some things. i got a couple people interested um, or in mind and interested, so hopefully we can get a few things started going on. Thanks for listening. Y'all have a good night.